everyone, it's Alyssa and welcome to You Can Learn Math. Today we're talking about how to find the y-intercept of a function. So we are not going to be covering things like circles that go through and you're like, okay, y-intercepts, nope, just functions. So those would be your lines, your parabolas, your cubics, your square roots, <laughs> all those different ones. We're just going to be doing how to find the y-intercept of these functions. So first off, what is a y-intercept? A y-intercept is where our function, whichever type of function it may be, where it crosses the y-axis. Now a function, it's only gonna cross the y-axis at a single point. And we're gonna figure out what that point is. Also notice this is, since it is where they cross the y-axis, what is our value of x right here on the y-axis? It's zero. So always when you're asked for the y-intercept, you're gonna have an ordered pair, that's our name for this, that starts with zero, and there'll be some other number after it, but the first one, the x value is always zero. So let's start with the simplest of these to visualize and really see, and it's a line. Now the most common form of a line, or the one most students like the most, is the y equals mx plus b, or slope intercept format. In this format, m is my slope and b is my y intercept. If it's in this form, you literally don't have to do any math. You can just look at that number and go, ah, I know that number on the end with no x or y, no variable by it, that is my y-intercept, boom, I'm done. So if I had the equation y equals 2x plus 3, I go, hey, that's in slope-intercept format. I know this number by itself is the intercept, that y-intercept. So 0, because it always starts with a 0, 3 is my y-intercept. And it's going to look something, not drawing that precisely, <laughs> it's not perfectly straight, but it's going to look something like that. There we go, there's my y-intercept, done. Well, what if we're given a line, but it's not in this lovely, lovely, excuse me, lovely slope-intercept format? What if it's in the more dreaded standard form? Like 3x plus 4y equals 10. What do you do? Well, there's two ways you can go about this. One, you can solve for y, that is get y by itself, and everything off to the side. Or you can go, wait a minute. Hmm, we said previously that any intercept, that's a y-intercept, the x value there is going to be zero. x equals zero right here at that y-intercept. So if x is zero, if I put zero in for x, I could solve for y and then I'd have my coordinate. And you would be exactly right if you thought that. Good for you. So let's do that. Let's plug in a zero for x. And then I get three times zero is just zero. Plus four y equals 10. So that's just gone now. And I am left with there four y equals 10. And to undo that four times y, I want to divide by four to undo that multiplication. So I get y equals 10 fourths, I'm running off the page, and I can simplify that down, simplify that fraction to five halves. So my y-intercept for that would be zero and five halves. And let's see what would have happened if I had decided to solve for y instead. I go, okay, three x plus four y equals 10. To solve for y, I need to get rid of that three x first, and then that four is the second step. So to get rid of the three x, it's being added. So I want to subtract it from both sides. So it leaves me a four y on the left and a 10 minus three x on the right. But we always wanna do our polynomials in descending order. So I'm gonna reorder that to be negative, doesn't want me to switch over, negative three x plus 10. And then since this is 
y times 4. I want to divide everything by 4 to get rid of that. And I'm going to get y equals negative 3 fourths x plus 10 fourths, which again, we can simplify to 5 halves. Now it's in y equals mx plus b format. I know my b is my y-intercept. 5 halves, a. It works either way. Now, the reason that I showed you both ways, because you're like, but if you just do this y-intercept, why don't you just do that every time? So you only have to remember one thing. Well, if all we ever dealt with were lines, I'd say go for it. But you know it's not going to stay that simple for long, right? Right? You know they're going to make it harder on you. So what about other functions? Other functions don't go into that nice y equals mx plus b kind of format. They don't have that little that little standard where they're telling us this is the y-intercept. Or do they? Hmm. Let's look at one. So I have y equals, let's say, 2x squared plus 3x plus 5. That is a parabola. It's a quadratic. Parabolas, usually they look something like this, either up or down. They can be narrow, they can be wide, but that's our basic shape. How do I find its y-intercept? I could go through a lot of trouble trying to graph it manually. That's a, there is another video if you need to know how to graph a parabola manually. I do have a video on that, link down below. But for this, if you're only being asked the y-intercept, how would you do that? It is that same method where we go, hey, here on the y-intercept, x equals zero. Let's plug zero in for x. So what happens if you plug a zero in for x? Every time you do, it's going to get rid of that term because zero, zero squared, zero cubed, zero to the fourth, zero to whatever power is going to be zero. And any number times that zero is going to be, you guessed it, zero. So in this case, 2 times 0 squared, 0 squared is 0, so 2 times 0 is 0. Over here, 3 times 0 is 0. And so to bring everything down here, I get 0 plus 0 plus 5. All that's 5. So what I get there is saying y equals 5. So my y-intercept, remember the first is always 0, 0, 5. And look, just like with that y equals mx plus b line, that little b on the end, that constant, that plain number with no variables attached was the y-intercept. Ding, ding, ding. There it is again. That plain number that's on the end is going to be your y-intercept. Now, a couple little caveats here to remember. This only works if it is in the form y equals or f of x equals. Everything has to be on that right side. Secondary caveat, we are talking about these basic parabolas, cubics, x to the fourths, x to the fifths, these polynomials where you have things written in descending order and you've just got these plain little um, basic sort of <laughs> terms. If it is anything, shall we say, out of the ordinary, where it is not just a string of terms with powers of x and then a little number by itself on the end, go back to that same principle, you know, how we figured out that it was the little number by itself on the end. What did we do to determine that? We plugged in zero wherever there's an x. So if you ever have a question in your mind going, uh, wait a minute, there's some weird stuff happening here. There isn't really this number by itself or something like what's going on. Always, you can always do this. You plug in zero for X, it will always work. This one I'm telling you here is just a little kind of shortcut once you get a good handle on this that you can go, oh yeah, these are just plain terms connected to an X. They're gonna cancel out and disappear when I plug in zero. That little five is going to be all that's left. For example, and let me erase this, what if you were given something like y equals the square root of, and this, this green's a little too light, let's get something different, 
Oh, blue. Aren't we fancy? All right. Y equals the square root of X plus four. Okay, so here we go. If we want to find the y-intercept of this, it's not in that fun little descending order of terms. There's a square root involved. Weird things are happening. I need to plug in a zero for x. So that's what I'm going to do. y equals double equals, because that's apparently now a thing, zero for x plus four. So y equals the square root of zero plus four is four. What's the square root of four? Two. My y-intercept is zero, two. Right, and there's there's a lot of functions out there, like absolute values, another one. Again, anytime you've got something unusual going on, just plug that x, you know, that zero in for x. Like say the absolute value of x squared plus nine. All right, let's plug in. Actually, let's make it a little more interesting than that. Let's do x squared minus nine. Okay, what is my y-intercept? Hmm, I'm not sure. I better plug in because it's not a standard descending polynomials, descending terms in a polynomial. Got that absolute value. I should plug in a zero for x. I plug it in. Zero squared minus nine. Zero squared is just zero. So zero minus nine or negative nine. And the absolute value of negative nine is positive nine. So my y-intercept is zero, nine. So there you have it. You have the slope intercept form, which gives you that nice little number right on the end. You have your basic polynomials, which again, it's the nice little number sitting on the end. But the way you can always be sure, even if you don't remember that rule, and this works, I can't think of an exception for all functions. You plug in a zero wherever there's an x, every single x, replace it with zero, do your math, and you will have your y-intercept. If this was helpful or useful in any way, please like, share, subscribe. You know the drill. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you have a great day. See you later. Bye.